uh, just before you start too late hey everybody welcome very much to uh, welcome <laughs> hello everybody welcome to the life enthusiast online uh, radio tv and blab network restoring vitality to you and to the planet i'm scott Patton. joining us is our health coach mark patella as usual and we have a very very special guest dr mike welcome gentlemen thank you hi hi hello. so we're going to talk about pain and uh, so the answer to all your pain problems is take two aspirin and go see your doctor in the morning, correct? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Except when it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, sure, for the ordinary headache or whatever, no problem. Right. Right. But the kind of people that we have been uh, lately running into are in a chronic situation, not the odd little bit. Yeah, chronic pain is definitely a different situation, for sure. I'm unfortunately an intimate knower of chronic pain. Oh, okay. back, in my, back in my 20s, I uh, was poisoned by mercury by a friendly really? dentist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Friendly dentist in installed 12 fillings, and within months, I was a total wreck. My back, mm -hmm. well, it started in my carpal tunnel, then my plantar fasciitis kicked in, then the back started to go, and, uh, and other complications later. But mm. pain was there and then i started having episodes of the back going all to hell when mm -hmm. i would be for three weeks laid up so bad that i would roll out of the bed on all fours and then crawl on all fours yeah. to the toilet and just got my tush over the seat did my business and then just got down on all fours back to the bed yeah i've been i've been there <laughs> okay and then i learned a new one my back went out a different way because I was attend I was seeing chiropractors and other, I mean, I tried everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I learned that I could sleep face down on my rocking chair. So I would flip the rocking chair open, mm -hmm. I would rest my forehead on the foot support. Wow. <laughs> and I would twist myself just so because the pressure was relieved only when I was bent backwards like this, but also that I was sort of twisting slightly to the side. Like whatever. Doesn't sound comfortable. <laughs> well, but that was the position in which I could actually sleep for two hours yeah. without. Anyway, yeah. I'm just saying it because I want to demonstrate that I intimately understand chronic unrelating pain that mm -hmm. you would like to I don't know, take a gun and shoot yourself it's that bad yeah i can i can relate to that because I, I suffered from severe pain for about 35 years cool. uh, knee bilateral knee pain i've had bad episodes of neck pain and low back pain i've had plantar fasciitis tmj problems uh for me the solution ended up being getting in touch with what was going on for me emotionally uh, in terms of stress, tension, and repressed emotions, exactly. Yeah, it's just by the yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. I'm sure yeah, okay. more back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, this was one of the things that made a huge difference in my life. Mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. would like to get you to tell your side of it and and the services that you offer that are related to this because not everybody can go visit Doctor Sarno anymore. Right. Right. I'm yeah. I believe he's retired. He's about 92 or 93 years old now, so I'm pretty sure he's retired. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the techniques I use are based on Dr. Sarno's work. Uh, he's the pioneer. He's the one who, you know, back about 40 years ago, I believe it is now, he was seeing a lot of patients for chronic low back pain and chronic neck pain using traditional methods to try to treat them, like medicines and physical therapy and chiropractic and things like that. And he was very frustrated with the results. It just wasn't working. So he started to investigate to try and figure out what was going on. And the correlation that he noticed very intensely was uh, stress-related disorders and people having back pain or neck pain. And eventually he figured out what was going on, that it was mostly stress, tension, and especially repressed or buried emotions that was setting up a physical uh, situation that led to the pain. Right on. So mm -hmm. before before we dive in, I would actually like to give people a chance to meet you a little bit, okay. not just a voice, but a bit of your background. Could you actually say a bit about your education and uh, practice yeah. and whatever history? Uh-huh. Yep. Well, um, 
as I was saying before we started, I'm from New Jersey. I've lived in New Jersey, United States my whole life. Um, I uh, went to uh, undergraduate school at the University of Pennsylvania. I was actually, I actually graduated as a biomechanical engineer. So I was very interested in math and science and physics and engineering. I was pretty sure I was going to go to medical school, but I wanted to do a major that also interested me just in case I changed my mind. But I didn't. Right after college, I went to medical school. I actually went to Rutgers, which is here in New Jersey. And uh, after medical school, I did a family practice residency, which is a three-year program where you basically uh, learn how to practice as a doctor and especially how to practice as a general practitioner. And I've had about 25 years of experience working as a physician. Most of that time I just practiced regular traditional medicine. Uh, as a family physician, I spent a lot of time doing urgent care medicine and also general practice. I spent four years doing therapeutic musculoskeletal injections like uh, knee injections, uh, shoulder injections, especially for arthritis. And they were very effective. I actually did about 50,000 injections in four years. It was a very busy practice. Wow. Uh, and they helped people with arthritis, but people always had to come back for more injections. And then I guess going back a little, about 10 years ago, I was having trouble with back pain. And I discovered Dr. Sarno's book, uh, his previous book, Healing Back Pain. And I read it, and it made a lot of sense. And that helped me to a certain extent. But just reading the book didn't tell me everything I needed to do to get free from pain. And then a few years ago, I, div I discovered Adam Heller's uh, book, Zero Pain Now, which is really an extension of Dr. Sarno's work. He basically took Sarno's work and uh, basically tweaked it, I guess you could say. And that gave me incredible results in my own personal life in terms of getting free from pain. Uh, my pain level improved within a month. It improved like 98%. So I was virtually free from pain, just occasional pain here and there. And it worked so well for me that I realized that this is what I wanted to do in terms of my career. So I studied with Adam Heller, uh, did an intensive six-month program to learn how to do what he does in terms of helping people get free from pain. And that's where I am now. Awesome. So oh, cool. who would it apply to? Like people are listening, like they'll be wondering, can I get help? Mm -hmm. The... The most common type of pain disorder that this works for is what I would call chronic musculoskeletal pain, things like chronic low back pain, chronic neck pain, and these things, even if you've been diagnosed with a herniated disc or a bulging disc or spinal stenosis or arthritis of the spine, the mind-body techniques we use like Sarno still work great for that. It works great for things like fibromyalgia. Uh, the medical... Current medical science will tell you there's no cure for fibromyalgia, but hundreds and possibly maybe thousands, I don't know for sure, but at least hundreds of people with fibromyalgia have gone through the Zero Pain Now program and are completely free from fibromyalgia pain. So it is possible for it to be cured. It just isn't cured medically. It's cured by understanding stress, tension, and, and repressed emotions. This also works great for things like chronic tendonitis, like people, uh, like with the shoulder, rotator cuff tendonitis, carpal tunnel, um, it also works great for chronic headaches like migraine headaches and tension headaches because those also come from stress, tension, and repressed emotions. What it doesn't work for are more organic types of chronic pain. It doesn't work for cancer pain. It will not work very well for rheumatoid arthritis at this point, lupus, um, sarcoidosis, things like that. So, that. so it doesn't work for everything, but it works for most forms of chronic physical pain that are not related to a serious organic disorder. So what you're saying is, is if my nervous system is basically working and it's fine. So in other words, I haven't had my hand chopped off or I haven't had damage done to the nerves somehow, mm -hmm. uh, then this could, this is something that could actually be very effective. Yes. Yes. Very, very, very effective. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the repressed emotions, because as you know, as you and you're a member, we really appreciate having you as a member mm -hmm. of the fibromyalgia support group. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of the posts you've read. I've seen a lot of them because I'm one of the people that actually authorizes the posts. So I tend to scan through them all to make sure that they're not, you know, spammy. And um, <laughs> I feel like, De almost devastated, tremendously sad after I've gone through, you know, 
my five or 10 minutes every couple hours of approving these posts because my heart just goes out to these people yeah. as they describe the problems. You know, is this just me because I've got this thing going on or is it, does somebody else have it? And, you know, there are also the other types of posts, which I really, I'm happy. I feel like I'm alone now. I don't feel like I'm alone, which is great. But one of the things that, that I wonder about is, you know, like who in the world doesn't have, I'll use your term, repressed memories or traumas in their lives that are unresolved, like we all do. And so now we've got this group of people or a percentage of our population where it's either way more than or they've not dealt with it mm -hmm. or they have no coping mechanisms for it. Or what? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, right? Uh, but I think of, I think along those lines. I'm thinking like, what would happen if if they if they went to a therapist for a couple of weeks? Or I mean, I spent years and years going to weekend retreats for personal growth, where walking on fire, and you know, they were you know people were psychoanalyzing me, and they were doing all these different things and and yelling exercises and angry exercises and. And, you know, now everybody goes, gee, you're, you know, why are you so calm and peaceful and blah, blah, blah. And I go, I don't know. And then and they go, yeah, there was a 10 year period where every weekend I was yelling, screaming and hugging trees. So maybe that had something to do with it. Right. Yeah. Well, you, but, you bring up. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. And I just wanted to end up by saying, you know, most of us don't want to look at any of this stuff at all. Mm -hmm. Like I certainly didn't. I mean, I was you know, my, my wife, ex-wife now dragged me kicking and streaming to a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it wasn't something I wanted to do. Now I'm happy that I did it because mm -hmm. I'm assuming that if I hadn't and all that stuff was still there, which I didn't know about, mm -hmm. still wouldn't know about it. And I would probably be a basket case. So. Mm -hmm. It's a, a few very interesting points that you bring up. Uh, one is it is a spectrum in terms of repressing emotions. Um, let me make clear what that means. People may not know what that term means. What, a lot of people in our society tend to not really acknowledge their emotions, but just kind of push them down inside. That's what we mean by repress. When you push them inside automatically, you're not even aware of them. And this is very common, especially for things like anger and rage, because in our Western society, it's just not really acceptable to express emotions like that, at least not fully. Uh, one one example always comes to my mind is, I don't know if you've ever seen a video on the news from the Middle East when someone dies and you see the mourners and they're, they're wailing, they fall, they're wailing, yes. they fall on the ground. They're, they they let their feelings out so much more than people in Western society. And I'm not saying we have to be like that, but it's just one example of how different it is. So every The only time we actually do something like that is when the football team scores a touchdown yeah. or the yeah. guy hits the home run. Yeah. Like that's the only time. Exactly. And then it's not sad. It's yeah. Well, I guess it's sad for half the team, right. half the people. Right. Right? Yeah. So, so, to, so in our society, to a certain extent, almost everyone probably represses emotions to some extent. But it, there's a spectrum. Some people are really, really good. Repress, repressing emotions. Some people had trauma when they were children that led them to get very good at repressing emotions. But not everybody who has um, chronic pain has had severe trauma. Some people just repress emotions just like most people in our society do. And some people end up with pain. Some people end up with depression or anxiety because those are also manifestations of repressed emotions. Uh, some people just manage to not have any of those, even though they repress emotions a little bit. So it's very common in our society to repress emotions. And that leads to some changes in the way the brain functions, and that leads to physical pain. So the pain is real that people like this have. The pain is physical and it's real, right. it's just that it doesn't start in the physical body. It starts in the brain first with the repressed emotions. And you mentioned about the fibromyalgia people. I feel so bad when I read the posts in the fibromyalgia group because they're hurting so bad. Fibromyalgia is probably the most intense manifestation of um, a TMS or a, a, as we call diversion pain syndrome when people repress emotions and end up with pain. Fibromyalgia is the most intense manifestation of that. And these people are suffering very, very intensely. And the thing is, it's difficult to uh, broach the topic of 
uh, stress, tension, and emotions because then they feel like you're saying it's all in their head, they're imagining it, but that's not the case. It starts with repressed emotions and it leads to very real physical changes, actually decreased blood flow and decreased oxygen to the muscles and the other tissues. So the pain is very real. It's just that it's, it's difficult with people who've been suffering from chronic pain for a long time to introduce a concept that's a, that's kind of new and not exactly yeah. mainstream. Yeah. And, and the last thing they want to hear is just relax. Yeah. Oh, and that brings up the other, uh, the other concept you said that's very important. People can go to therapy for years, an excellent therapist, and not have any improvement in pain. I was one of those people. I went to therapy for probably 10 years to deal with just emotional stuff, and I made incredible uh, progress emotionally. And I also uh, got in touch with a lot of repressed emotions. But I didn't have any improvement in the pain until I discovered Dr. Sarno's uh, work and then Adam Heller's Zero Pain Now because one of the most important things to get free from pain when it comes from stress, tension, and emotions is to understand what's happening to, to, gain, under, to get the knowledge in your head of my pain is coming from these emotions. Until you understand that, your brain can continue to divert the emotional pain into physical pain, no matter how much psychotherapy you have. So it, there's a big difference Good between point. psychotherapy just for emotional reasons and, and getting in touch with emotions to get rid of the pain, which is actually and, even easier process. Oh, good. Well, and I want to get to that. One of the things that I want to just step back a little bit, because we've talked about repressed emotions. And as you were talking about, you said three things, and I can't remember the second one, but the stress was the one that I wanted to pick up too, because Almost every day, somebody writes something along the lines of, my husband thinks I'm lazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? So what does that mean? Well, what that means is that person is under stress now because there's this, there is this stress in the family unit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you start thinking about yourself as being under stress a lot, when, you, when we're talking about fibromyalgia, it would apply to a lot of things, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, then it's all like there's no opportunity for you to to recover, to relax, to rest, to recover, to release all these things because most of us deal poorly or act like our behavior. Not I don't want to say our behavior. Our performance is poor under stress. Yeah. Very few people will say, "Oh, you know, if I'm in a stressful situation, it really makes me go." And yet, when they observe them closer, they find when you're not stressed you are far more uh, effective and, and uh, productive and all those sort of other things. So, uh, and I think that applies to our body. So if our body is trying to heal itself, but we're constantly, cortisones are through the roof and we're under stress, we get to the point where we don't even think that's stress. We think that's normal. Yeah, it's, a, it's very interesting because um, stress is a big factor. In my experience, the repressed emotions are even a bigger factor than the stress, but it, it um, it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle because having repressed emotions can, it definitely increases your stress. Having pain, no doubt, increases your stress, especially for someone with fibromyalgia, but for any type of chronic pain. Yeah. Well, when you were talking about repressed emotions, what flipped into my head because I spent 20 years running grocery stores oh, okay. was when the customer comes by and gives you a jab because your prices are too high or mm -hmm. they, you know, they come through and they get mad at you because you shortchanged them or you didn't get the change right. Or mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the can of pork and beans was the, that they picked up was the wrong one. And now they needed to read, you know, there are all these little things. And of oh, course yeah. the cashier and the store manager and everybody else has to just take it. Like you can't, yeah. you can't, you know, that emotion you're talking about in the middle East, you can't do that to your customers. It's just like, Yes, Mrs. Smith. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. We'll look after Mrs. Smith. And then it, and of course, what happens mm -hmm. is you have conflict in the store all the time because the cashier and the bagger get fighting, or the the yeah. meat guy and the meat grinder and the deli gal get mad, or the produce guy throws a banana at the grocery guy, and you know, which I guess are all ways of kind of getting the emotion out. But I can see in our society that that happens all the time. Like people will say stuff. And they don't even think of what they're saying. And all of a sudden, it brings up an emotion in the other person, which, of course, then they <clears throat> swallow it. And then it just builds up and builds up and builds up until all of a sudden the body just says, "Yeah, dude, I got enough of this. We're stopping. And then that looks like pain or yeah. chronic fatigue that, or whatever That's else. a great example with the supermarket because this is why – this is how we know that the, even people who are – 
mentally, uh, emotionally well tend to repress emotions to a certain extent in our society. The mm -hmm. example I always give is like the one you mentioned in the grocery store. Say you have a boss who's really nasty and yells at you all the time. If you want to keep your job, you're probably not going to be yelling back or losing your cool. You're going to just kind of suck it up and, and move on with your day, uh, maybe vent later, but you're repressing a lot of that anger because you just don't have the luxury to, to express it. So common everyday uh, activities like this are ways that people do, uh, you know, average people do repress emotions. You just can't be yelling at your boss and, and not get fired most of the time. Right. And, you know, in the old days, before we had natural gas heating and air conditioning and everything else, when you got home from your day out in the field or whatever you were doing, you went behind and you chopped wood, which was probably a really good way. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, it chop the wood, save the kids, right? You know. Yeah. Uh, so there were ways that we were far more active and these things would kind of just come out. You know, if you're chopping wood and all of a sudden you'd be, you'd be thinking about, the, I know this is what happens to me. I think about these things and then they just sort of go away. Yeah. But uh, we don't have that now. Now it's you go home, you watch, you know, veg on TV or whatever it is and you don't you don't do anything. So let's talk a little bit more about, you know, how the process works. Sure, sure. Um, basically, when I... When someone contacts me and they're interested in seeing if I can help them, the first thing I do is I have them take what's called the pain test. It's just a 10 question questionnaire. It's a good screening tool to see if someone has pain that's likely coming from repressed emotions and stress. So uh, it's, like I said, it's just 10 questions, gives me a good, we, you get a score at the end and it gives me a good idea of whether there's someone who's has pain from repressed emotions. And then I'll do a, a free initial consultation with them. I work with people anywhere in the country because I can do the consultation by telephone or by Skype. Sure. To determine if someone has pain coming from stress or, or repressed emotions, you hardly ever need a physical exam. It, the most important thing is just talking to the person, finding out about their stress, finding out about their pain, and then I can make a good determination as to whether or, or not they, they they have this situation. And then what I do is, and there's different, there's different programs available. I like the Zero Pay Now program because it gets the best and fastest results. So I work with that program. I take people through a 28-day program. The program is 28 days because you want to learn how to get in touch with those emotions that you've repressed and how to get rid of the pain. And you want it to become a habit. You have to start doing, uh, you don't have to change a lot in your life. You just have to change how you deal with emotions to a certain extent and how you deal with the pain and you want it to become a habit. So it takes about a month for anything to be a habit. So that's why the program sure. is 28 days long. And it involves a book and a workbook that gives the person the necessary information and tasks, uh, I'm sorry, exercises that they need to do to get in touch with the emotions. And then depending on which program they choose to go with, I'll work with them personally and take them through what I call a two hour breakthrough session. About 85% of people have their pain level go down to a zero during that session. Oh, um, good. Yeah, so it, it and, and the, the zero pain out process works amazingly fast. Um, when I work with someone as a private client or patient, um, they usually start to have reduction in pain within three days of starting the program. Like I said, 85% will go down to a zero or a one even if they started at like an eight or a 10 uh, on day number six. And then usually over the next week or two, it'll go down to a zero and stay down to a zero. And occasionally the pain will come back, but they now have the tools to get rid of it very quickly if it does come back. So the overall percentage of success with a private program when you work with a zero pain now practitioner is 97.4%, which is off the chart. You know, no medicine. That's wonderful. 97% of people. And then you know, the private program is a little bit more expensive. So there's also what we call the advanced virtual session, which is the same program, but a little bit more in independent study. And instead of a live program, a live session with a zero pay now practitioner, that's done by DVD, where Adam Heller leads the person through the process on a few DVDs. And that's considerably less expensive. Unfortunately, insurance is not covering what we do yet, but we're in uh, communication with several workmen comp, workmen's comp insurances, uh, and they're interested because we just did a pilot study at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, it was only seven patients, but all seven patients had chronic pain for 10 to 30 years, and every single patient is now pain-free. And they Great. got free within two weeks, each person approximately. So how about this OxyContin epidemic in the United States? Well, it's obviously really bad. I, you know, I'm concerned about it. Um, 
I'm a little. For those of us that don't know what it is, mm -hmm. can you step back a bit and just tell us sort of the 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 background of this? Well, the point we have here is that doctors who do not have the access to the tools that uh, Dr. Mike just mm -hmm. showed uh, talked about is they prescribe, and what okay. they prescribe is uh, pain numbing uh, opioid type of medications, and uh, they are essentially legal morphine or legal heroin. Um, Go on. Uh, what I was going to say is okay. I, I have mixed feelings about it. First of all, you're right. It's very dangerous. Uh, it's not something you want to play with. There's a very high addiction rate. So it's definitely a big, big problem. The reason why I say have, I have mixed uh, ex experience with that and mixed feelings about it is before I discovered zero pain now, I was in so much pain that I had to take Oxycontin and Percocet around the clock for five years. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to function without it. And the reason is I hadn't discovered zero pain now. I knew about Sarno stuff, but I didn't know how to really apply it to my life. So I had no choice. If I wanted to keep functioning as a doctor, I had to take the medicines. At least at the time, I didn't see any better option. And fortunately, I'm not someone who tends to get addicted to medicine like that. Because when I went through the zero pain now uh, process, within the first month, like I said, my pain was decreased by 98%. So I very quickly tapered off the Oxycontin and the Percocet. Took me about a month or a month and a half because I didn't want to get intense withdrawal. And I haven't taken anything in like a year and a half, two years. I haven't had to. But back then, before I knew how to get rid of the pain by recognizing repressed emotions, I, I needed I needed something to help me get through. So, yes. so that's why I have mixed feelings about it. Well, I'm not saying it in an accusatory way to, mm -hmm. or to blame or to look down on anybody. I'm just saying that because of lack of education, because yes. of the mindset of the pharmaceutical cartel, oh yeah, and how it's you know deals with insurance and the education of the doctors and all of that, it just mm -hmm. conspires to deal with drugs as solutions as opposed to a service as solution. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest things that's very, it's a shame because uh, our whole medical system is is geared towards finding an answer in a drug. You know, this drug will solve this problem, this drug will solve that problem. But especially when it comes to stress-related disorders like chronic pain and other things like depression or anxiety, drugs can give you temporary relief, but they're not the solution. But in our society, you're right, our medical establishment really believes that a drug is the solution and it's not right i'd like to jump in with one of my favorite pain stories martin's heard it probably a million times and uh but i know i want to share it with you for two reasons one is to see if because this is more of a physical problem than a, an emotional problem and if the pain uh process you're talking about would help because i'm curious to know uh, but also for everybody who who has had fibromyalgia for 30 years, has been in pain for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and you think that there's no hope, uh, this person just, and what we're talking about is is the mind here in mm -hmm. the repressed emotions and everything else. Mm -hmm. And she's about the most extreme example of this that I think you'll ever find. Mm -hmm. I used to run a, a grocery store in the Okanagan, actually not far from where Martin lives now. And one day the pharmacy, pharmacy manager called me over. He says, you see that lady over there? And I go, yeah. He says, and she'd be about 35 to 40, and she had two girls, cutest, cutest little girls, like about uh, six and eight. And she says, looking at her, do you think she's in any pain or has any problems? I says, no, she looks like a perfectly fine mom, right? <clears throat> he says, the medication that she gets subscribed tells me that the pain that she is in when she's not medicated, you and I would be laying on the ground in a fetal position. <laughs> like that's how high the dosage was mm. and that's how much they were given to, yeah. giving to her, right? I said, you're kidding. Because she didn't look at all. She didn't look drugged out. She didn't look in it. She looked exactly like what you'd expect a normal mom to look like. And he says, yeah. And so he says, I had a very interesting conversation with her today because I, I said to her, like, this is like, if you take this, you're basically zoned out a zombie. And she says, yeah, I know. She says, I hardly ever take them. And he says, well, the reason you're taking them is obviously you're in a huge amount of pain. And she says, yeah, I'm in a huge amount of pain. And so he says, well, like, how, how, do you, how can you function with this pain? And she said, well, she said that what happened was when she was eight years old, she fell out of a tree and she broke her neck. And the, the way it broke, when it 
nobody knew it was broken. And it, when it healed, it pinched one of the nerves in her neck. Mm -hmm. The result was she had this horrific pain and it just got worse and worse and worse. So they, they finally figured out what had happened. And then they said to her, well, we can operate, but there's a 50-50 chance that you'll be a paraplegic because of the way the nerve is, right? Mm -hmm. So she says, well, I have, these two, I have these two babies at that time, and there's no way that I'm going to saddle them with a paraplegic mom. So okay. that's not an option. And then they said, well, the other thing is, is we can give you these drugs. And then, of course, she takes some of the drugs, and then she realized she could not function at all. It just totally dulled everything. So she says, I have to deal with this pain. Mm -hmm. And she says, the only way she could describe it is she took the pain and put it in a little box and she, you know, and then she just ignored it as mm -hmm. best she could. And mm -hmm. she says, usually what happens is my husband comes home from work and I turn the kids over to him and I'll probably take one or two pills because at that point I'm like, I'm just had, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. But she had actually said, I'm just going to, because there was no way other than the 50 50 surgery to really cure this mm -hmm. she says i'm gonna i'm just going to bowl my way through this pain i'm gonna look after my kids they're not gonna know that i'm in any pain. i mean you looked at her she just looked totally mm -hmm. two beautiful girls she's happy as could be right and uh but she was in this agonizing pain so it's amazing what the mind can do both for yeah. us and against us is, i guess is my point right yeah yeah it, it really is i mean the mind can do a lot a lot of people have different strategies mental strategies to you know, like you said put the pain aside and just you know go on with their task most of the people i know who have fibromyalgia are very are very functional it, it, they function through pain but they manage to function to a certain extent um, interesting thing about this uh, uh, person that you just told me about is she obviously had a, a major injury when she was young, and the pain she's having now could possibly be left over from that, but it's also possible she could be su someone who suffers from pain related to repressed emotions because almost everyone I see, they they believe their pain started with an injury of some sort, whether it be mm. bending and feeling a pop in their back. Now hers is obviously an extreme case. She, she had a fall and she had a very severe injury and she uh, recovered from it. But most of the time, now I'm sure there are exceptions, but most of the time our bodies heal and usually pain from an injury does not become chronic. Whenever someone has pain from an injury that goes beyond a few months, we always suspect that they may have TMS or reversion pain syndrome. Uh, like I said, there's, ex there's exceptions, but even in a case like that where she had an obvious injury that started, that, that can allow the brain or the mind an opportunity to create more pain that comes that starts with emotions. Uh, you know, a, an actual injury is a great time for your brain to take advantage of your repressed emotions and create more pain. And sometimes it really seems like the pain started with an injury, and then someone goes through a process like zero pain. Now the pain goes away completely with no physical treatments. You don't do anything to fix the injury or the supposed scar tissue or the the pr pressure on the nerve that is supposedly from that injury. So in her case, you know, it's hard to say. Um, right. But she, that's actually a really who, good answer. Yeah, but she, she's someone who I, I would recommend she do the pain test and talk to someone and see if it, it could help her. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that, Dr. Cool. Mike. Sure. Yeah. So uh, back on the forum, a lot of the statements are, it's all in your head. Mm -hmm. People come back with, you are telling me it's in my head. It's real. How it dare you tell me it's in your head? Mm -hmm. And and then the other statement would be, well, it's psychosomatic. You have a role in it. You can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And the response is, but I didn't will it on myself. This is not something I wanted. Right. And uh, so there are these circular arguments where I'm saying, if you can be proactive and if you can own the possibility that you have access to a solution, would you step out of your victim state uh, position? Mm -hmm. How do you yeah. handle that? That makes a lot of sense because almost no one wills pain on themselves. There's probably exceptions, but almost no one does. And when you have pain that's coming from repressed emotions, whether it be fibromyalgia or low back pain, it's not something you're doing purposely to yourself. 
you know, our sub our, our unconscious or our subconscious minds where we have repressed emotions, by definition, that's a part of your mind you don't have access to. So you're not consciously aware of what's happening. So people with this, with this syndrome, they're not purposely causing pain. And I understand when they say, but you're telling me it's all in my head because it's not all in your head. The pain is physical. It's real. The pain, in most cases, the pain comes from decreased blood flow and a little bit of decreased oxygen, oxygenation of the tissues. And that leads to real physical pain, leads to muscle knots, muscle cramping. But the key is that's not the root cause of the problem. The root cause of the problem is the repressed emotions that leads to changes in the brain in terms of the autonomic nervous system, which controls things like blood flow, which leads to physical. So what I try and do is I try and say, listen, I'm not trying to say it's all in your head. Your pain is very, very real. It's physical. It can be excruciating. The main difference is that I believe that the root cause is in your brain in terms of stress, tension, and repressed emotions. It's not something you're doing on purpose. It's just an automatic system the way our our mind our minds work the bottom line is our minds think we'd rather have physical pain than deal with uncomfortable emotions because uh, in our society it's not considered acceptable to be very angry or full of rage things like that so our minds like to create a diversion which is the pain to get us to not pay attention to the emotions so I would tell them that this is what I believe is going on, but it's not saying their pain isn't real, and it's not saying there's something horribly wrong with them emotionally. It's just that people in our society do this, and this is what leads to a lot of cases of chronic pain. Yeah, we talk an awful lot about dealing with the root causes of stuff as opposed to the surface issues. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it, it is hard to own that, I'm doing it, right? Mm -hmm. But I often say, you know, 99% or 90% of our thinking is all subconscious. So you really, you know, how do you know what you really think? And then mm -hmm. look at your actions. And a total non-pain example popped into my head as you were talking. And I was chatting with a person who's a physical fitness trainer type, right? Super fit and everything else. And, and he got me on this program. And I said, you know, so after a few months, uh, we got together again and I said, yeah, I says, you know, I'm doing that program and I look in the mirror and I can, for the first time almost ever, I can start to see like the ripples of the abs. Right. <laughs> and he goes, Oh, good. I says, yeah. And guess what I did next? And he said, probably ate an apple pie and stopped exercising. And I said, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. It wasn't a conscious thing. I was, this is what I wanted. And then I did all these actions that, you know, put me back to, yeah. you know, not having the, the ripples sh start to show up, right? So I've actually been really working on that part of my, because obviously my subconscious thinks that this is safe, mm -hmm. doesn't want to do, and that's the way I think of things, right? That my subconscious, I'm doing this, I'm seeing this, my subconscious is obviously trying to do what it thinks I, I want, mm -hmm. and that's not what I want, so now I have to talk to my subconscious. So I'm, I'll have these little chats with myself, or I'll be saying this is, you know, putting pictures in my head of this is what I want to look like and all that sort of stuff. And this has been an ongoing, you know, I'm 59. So this has been an ongoing 49 year process. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. The, the subconscious mind has a lot to do with our behaviors. Um, I've, I've, one of the, one of the key things we do during zero pain now is teach people simple exercises to help their conscious mind communicate with their subconscious mind and can, basically convince it to let go of the emotions that are leading to the pain. And I also, I also know pretty much about the subconscious mind because uh, I was also trained to do something called NLP, neuro-linguistic programming. Yes. Which a lot of that has to do with getting better results in your life, changing behaviors, and all of that happens at the unconscious level. So in NLP, you'll learn a lot of techniques that uh, help you make changes in what your subconscious mind is doing, but make changes very quickly. What could take 10 years in therapy, you can do in an hour with an NLP session. Right. So, and it all has to do with what's going on in the subconscious mind. And I guess one thing that's hard for the majority of the population to, to get their heads around is the idea that, but I really, really want this. You know, that's what they say, and that's what they, you know, that's the expression that comes out of them when you ask them about anything, whatever the topic is, doesn't matter. I really, really want this, but and then they don't have it, or they have the opposite, and it's kind of like, yeah, but that can't mean that 
this part of me that I'm unaware of is 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 fighting me or something. Yet we see it all the time when people self sabotage themselves. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between wanting to do something and and having the skill or the tools to make it happen. And that that's what you know I do with the zero pain now. I mean, even even people who suspect or realize that stress and tension and repressed emotions is uh, causing a lot of pain, L like I was before I developed, before I, uh, I'm sorry, before I discovered the zero pain now process, I knew for a good eight or 10 years that there was definitely something emotional that was affecting my pain and probably causing it, but I didn't know what to do about it. And then when I discovered the zero pain now program myself, all of a sudden I had very easy but definite tasks to do each day to communicate between my uh, conscious mind and my subconscious mind and to recognize the emotions that were causing the pain and to get rid of the pain. But you can you know, be convinced of something, but maybe just not yet have the tools that you need to, to make the progress you want to make. Right. Well, let's get into some of the practicals, yeah? I'm sorry? I'm uh, saying to Scott, we should probably make sure that people are able to take action based on what they're learning here. Okay. Yeah. So, Dr. Mike, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would how would uh, how would they do that? Sure. Um, probably the best way would be to go to my website, which is freedomnowmd.com. That's freedom, the word freedom, F R E E D O M, the word now, N O W, and M D like medical doctor. dot com. Uh, my email address is info i n f o at freedomnowmd.com, so they could email me there. Uh, I'm on Facebook. My Facebook page is also called Freedom Now MD. Uh, so those are probably the best ways. Um, Good. Yeah. And when and I edit this, I'll put the URLs down, and we'll also have them in the descriptions and stuff, so people have access to that. Okay. Sure. Great. And as far as practicals, so the, um, why don't we tell them what they are looking at cost-wise? Sure, sure. Well, like I said, first of all, anyone who's interested, I will do a free initial consultation. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes. We do that by phone or by Skype, unless you happen to be in my area. Um, in terms of cost, uh, if, if I really feel someone definitely has diversion pain syndrome and would benefit, the private program right now is $2,500. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but just imagine if you, if you get free from 20 years of pain, how, how, much, how different your life is going to be. Now, if someone can't afford that, um, there's the advanced vir virtual session, which is $479, which gives ex excellent results. That's the program I did myself. And I had great results with that. If someone's on a real limited budget, there's a scaled down program that's for $117. That's pretty much an independent study with a book, a workbook, and a DVD. But they can still contact me if they, if they get stuck or if they need some help. And then what a lot of people do first, if they're not sure, or if I'm not sure they're a candidate, is they'll get the Zero Pay Now book, which I sell. You can get it at my website. You can also get it at the Zero Pay Now uh, website zeropainnow.com, but that can be a very good introduction. And what happens is sometimes people get free from their pain completely just by reading the book. Not everyone, maybe 20%, but a lot of other people have aha moments where they're like, oh, this is definitely me, or aha, that's, you know, and sometimes the pain will decrease a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll have a change in the pain. So for someone who's not sure they want to dive into a program, just reading the book can be a, a, a very good uh, start. Yeah, I would actually butt in with this. You know, I read this 20 years ago, and it made a huge difference in my world. Oh, yeah, that's great, too. I love Sarno's books. So yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying uh -huh. – I heard you say that uh, the Heller Method was better or easier to access or yeah, – It's, it's more user-friendly. It, it gives you exactly what you need to do to get free from the pain. With yeah. the Sarno books, you get a lot of information – some people can apply it to their own lives to get free from pain. Some people need more help and end up seeing it. Exactly. Who does what Dr. Sarno did. Um, so, yeah, but uh, both both work. Both definitely. Right. I mean, the reason I raised it was that, indeed, I was able to self-help myself right. out of this mm -hmm. chronic pain into uh, mostly free. Great. Great. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's different. Some people are very good at taking what they've read and applying it. Some people just need a little more help. That's right, for sure. 
Great. So we're going to wrap this up, Dr. Mike. I want to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot, put okay. on the pressure, stress you out. Okay. Give us uh, one or two uh, pain-free tips that you'd like to leave everybody with before we sign off. One or two pain-free tips. Well, um, to be, well, one thing to get free from pain, there's a very practical exercise that I give my clients. Uh, make a sit down, make a list of everything that's causing you any stress or uncomfortable emotions, whether it happened today or 40 years ago, if it's still on your mind, mm. make a list of that. After about 15 minutes, you should come up with a list of 50 to 100 things and then spend 15 minutes free writing about it, writing whatever comes to mind about that as fast as you can without worrying about punctuation or grammar or spelling. Because writing stuff down is a great way to get stress out of you and sort of onto the paper to, to let it go. Wow. And the other thing that I tell people is when they're having pain, just get comfortable and ask yourself, right now, what emotion am I feeling? And then pause and think, okay, what am I feeling? And say, okay, I'm feeling tense. And then do it again. Right now, what emotion am I feeling? And then pause, okay, now I'm feeling anxious. So say, I'm feeling anxious. If you do this for 15 minutes, you'll be amazed. For the first five minutes, you usually feel like it's going nowhere. Then all of a sudden, yeah. right now, what emotion am I feeling? I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling angry. Hey, my back pain just decreased from eight to six. So that's uh, those are two practical things to try, to try, try this sort of technique out and see what happens. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mike at freedomnowmd.com. I want to thank you very much for joining us. The last, been a pleasure. last 50 minutes or so has been awesome. Hopefully we can get you on again sometime. I would love that. Uh, Martin, over to you for any last words. Uh, if you want some more help or you want to just ring me out for bringing to such uninteresting guests on the show, you can call me at 1-866-543-3388 and visit at life-enthusiast.com where you can read about all the health issues and how to use nutrition and supplementation and detoxification to help with the physical side of things. So thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been the Life Enthusiast online radio, TV, and Blab Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye-bye.